Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to Utility Sports, and we're really excited. We've got the AP Top 25 coming at you again here in this video. There's a lot to break down, a lot of moving pieces yet again at this point of the season, and we're getting closer and closer to the college football playoffs. So these rankings become more and more indicative of what some of the experts are really thinking about when they write about these teams and what, how they feel about how their season's going. And let's start in the others receiving votes category. Also, we've got some really big, important programs in here right now with what's been a pretty insane season. Look at Texas, the Longhorns in here. A lot of people had, had high hopes for this team and, you know, flashback earlier in the year almost beat Alabama that maybe would have sprung them into the top 10 instead now they're outside of the top 25 at essentially what would be 26th Kentucky there as well Cincinnati another program I think is worth highlighting obviously made the college football playoffs last year then Notre Dame there was a lot of expectations for them coming into the year I uh, had a good win this week but they're still on the outside looking in Austin what do you think about some of these teams here that aren't in the top 25 as of right now do we think we're going to see some of these teams jump back in later on yeah, I, I think Cincinnati's a program you definitely have to watch. Notre Dame as well. Um, Texas is right in the mix. And, and you know, Kentucky, I have a little bit of belief in yet uh, with Will Levis at quarterback. We look at that Kentucky game against Tennessee. Overwhelming for Kentucky. They, you know, Tennessee threw a lot of different things at them defensively. Um, offensively, Hendon Hooker was awesome uh, per usual. Therefore, making a very difficult game for tennis or for Kentucky uh, to win. Cincinnati in that UCF game was interesting after watching part of that. I mean, Cincinnati has been phenomenal since 2018 against non-ranked opponents. That was their first loss against a, a team that was not ranked, um, you know, in four years, which is absolutely incredible. Uh, you got to like what Cincinnati has shown uh, despite losing a lot of talent in the draft. UCF had had a very, very nice comeback win um, against Cincy. So that was, uh, you know, that kind of rounds out our others receiving votes and number 25. Yeah, it's very interesting. UCF, like you said, Austin, the benefactor there of that big win over previously ranked Cincinnati, they now move up into that ranking. Let's jump up even higher here now. 24, Oregon State. Welcome to the show, Oregon State. Haven't talked about them much this year, but a 33-point win over Colorado Leaps them into the top 24 now. Liberty as well. Welcome to the show. No Malik Willis. No problem. He's due to make his first career start for the Tennessee Titans today. We're recording this. And now Liberty without Malik Willis is into the top 25 for the first time this year. Very impressive to see that. Syracuse uh, falls down six spots after we talked about Notre Dame with their nice win. Syracuse Orange. We were talking about them as, hey, is this team a pretender or not? I'm interested to hear your thoughts on that, Austin, when we get to it. NC State with a narrow win over VTech in their last matchup. They move up three spots this week. And then Wake Forest takes a massive fall. Uh, obviously, one that is not a good sign for that program. 27-point loss to Louisville. Kind of really puts a dagger in their season almost at this point, if you want to look at it from a college football playoff perspective. Austin, I want to know your thoughts on Syracuse, Wake Forest, and some of these other games as well. Yes, you know, first talking about Wake Forest, uh, a program and a team this season that's been pretty good at playing mistake-free football. That was not the case against Louisville. Louisville jumped all over them defensively and ended up being a very ugly loss for, you know, Wake Forest. Um, unfortunate because they were looking so good at the start of the season. Um, but, you know, tough loss here. Um, definitely lost respect uh, from the voters, clearly. Uh, a huge, huge drop for them. Um, you know, Syracuse, another team that, People are wondering, is this a real team? Um, you know, I, I I don't know if I really believe in Syracuse here, um, but those Syracuse was a team that had to do a lot of things correctly to even get into the top 25. Um, you know, when you look at program prestige, that definitely like plays a mental factor into the voters' heads, in my opinion. Um, so Syracuse, unfortunately, losing to Notre Dame uh, bumps them down a little bit. Um, you know, Liberty as well. I mean, they have been tremendous. Uh, seven and one record beating a very, very good BYU team. Um, strong program there. And then Oregon State, welcome to the party. Another Pac-12 school, you know, making a little bit of a jump here. Maybe Pac-12 can survive, um, you know, in, in this whole conference race. Uh, a lot of the different times, you know, we, we speak on um, the ACC, Pac-12, Big Ten, SEC, you know, who's the most powerful conference. And oftentimes Pac-12 is often, you know, left in the dust or out of the conversation. Yeah, as we move up now into number 19, you're going to see another team from the American Athletic Conference. Well, we're talking about conferences here. Uh, you're looking at Tulane at 19. Uh, as we move up the board here, Oklahoma State at 18 as well in the Big 12. They drop nine spots. And this is one of those one of those controversial ones here, right? Oklahoma State loses 48 to nothing to K-State Austin. Do they still deserve to be ranked at this point? 
That was a, an awful loss. Um, you know, they, they could not move the ball whatsoever. Um, this was the largest shutout win, you know, um, for a team that was, you know, ranked in that top 10, uh, I think ever. So terrible, terrible showing for them. Granted, it was in K-State, but regardless of the location, they still are, they would still lose that game terribly. Uh, not a good showing. Um, you know, Deuce Vaughn did his thing for K-State, uh, Oklahoma State. I mean, they even put Mike Gundy's son in at quarterback, and you saw him absolutely shaking. That's how this whole team looked the entire game, just off kilter, off balance, um, unorganized, just a, a terrible showing for Oklahoma State. Unfortunately, a, a team I felt very strong about. Um, now there's some big question marks here moving forward. Definitely not a good showing for them. As we go into number 17 now, we've got the UNC Tar Heels here at this spot representing the ACC. Their last game was an 18-point win over the Pittsburgh Panthers. At 16 now, Penn State, they drop only three spots here despite losing in a two-score fashion to Ohio State. I'm interested in your thoughts on that one as well. LSU here, of course, did not play a game this past week, but you see some teams ahead of them fall down. They move up. They're the benefactors of some other teams losing. Illinois, though, nice win for them over Nebraska. They moved to 7-1. and one. I'm not sure a lot of people expected them to be running the Big Ten West at this point, but it seems like they comfortably are now at this spot of the season. K-State there as well in the Big 12. We talked about their huge win over Oklahoma State. We saw OK State fall nine spots. Kansas State rises nine spots with that. Utah moves up two as well after beating Washington State in close fashion. And then Texas A&M lost to Ole Miss. And Lane Kiffin's been pretty active on Twitter after – what was a pretty big and important win for them. Kind of crazy to see an eight and one team here in the SEC only at number 11, Austin. I think there's a lot of strength here from 17 to 11. What are some teams you really want to talk about? Yeah, and speaking on that one loss for Ole Miss, that was to 15th ranked LSU. So once again, you know, I, I do have some question marks about that because I think Ole Miss maybe deserves a little bit more respect, um, you know, after just dropping that one game. Texas A&M is an absolute mess right now. This is one of the more talented teams on paper in the entire country. Jimbo Fisher's got to get it figured out quickly. Um, otherwise, there's going to be some changes probably made uh, within that program. Uh, K-State can't speak enough about how huge that win was for them. Not only did they beat a very good team in Oklahoma State, they demolished them. Therefore, I, I think had that been more so a 21-17 win, would not have seen such a drastic jump, not, not even close. Um, Illinois just continues to do their thing. Um, you know, Penn State, the discussion, should they drop lower? Um, it's tough when they're facing a, a team as good as Ohio State. You know, that's been consistently a top three team in the entire country all season. Um, I definitely understand, you know, why they wouldn't drop that far. Um, you know, there was a point in the game where Penn State felt they had a shot in this one, ultimately crumbled uh, at the end of the game. And, you know, unfortunately, uh, they they do just drop three spots, which is important for them. Uh, so overall, I, I don't think they got this part of it wrong. Of course, for you, you keep a very close eye on LSU, Austin. With the early returns here on the new regime, do you think that they made the right hire? And, and kind of what's the outlook for this program that struggled for a few years after they won the title with Burrow, Chase, and Jefferson? Yeah, the, the big question would be, can Brian Kelly recruit in the southern part of the United States? And that was a, a big discussion all offseason. He's done a nice job recruiting. He's done a nice job putting this team together, getting some key transfers such as Dayton Daniels, who has you know been phenomenal the last two games, 11 total touchdowns in those two games. This is a guy that's been able to figure it out, more dangerous on the ground. Um, hopefully they can continue to work him as a pocket passer. They're really doing uh, a lot of good things with him. I think the, the program outlook is pretty good considering – uh, you know, the, the hotbed recruiting area that they're in in Louisiana, a lot of in-state talent that like to stay there. They have good program prestige. This is a team that's going to continue to climb. I think they did make the right hire ultimately. And now moving into the top 10, of course, this is the meat and potatoes of the video. And there's a lot of different conferences represented here. And we're going to start it off with two Pac-12 schools. In fact, three of them, UCLA, USC, Oregon, Austin, take your pick on which one of these three teams do you prefer in the Pac-12 right now? Uh, and are all three of these teams dangerous if, you know, things go right for them down the end of the season? Could we see any of these three teams in the college football playoffs? Yeah, I, I don't find that being uh, an entirely likely outcome. However, I could see a pathway of it. The reason I say that is one of these teams is going to win the Pac-12 championship. That is a fact. Um, when you consider who, who it's going to be against, you know, it's very well possible that they, you know, obviously they square off. 
therefore getting, you know, if they go undefeated the rest of the way and then pick up that other win um, against, you know, one of these teams in the Pac-12 championship, therefore huge, huge boost to that resume. I feel like USC could be that team. I look at Caleb Williams and his maturity. Lincoln Riley's done a great job with this program here. Just one loss on the season, and they're starting to figure it out. You know, nice win against Arizona. Um, you know, Jordan Addison as well. This team's dangerous offensively, and I expect that to continue. Right. There's a lot of talent between these three programs. Oregon, too. They must be wondering to themselves, what if we didn't play Georgia week one, or what if we put out you know, a better foot forward in that game? Because maybe this whole Pac-12 conference could be looking different right now if Oregon was 8-0. Now moving up to number seven here, got TCU in the Big 12 and Alabama in the SEC. So we're seeing already three different conferences represented from 10 to 6. Austin, TCU, the Horn Frogs, 8-0, having one of their best seasons and one that was pretty surprising just with how quickly this program's reshaped itself. Then Alabama, 7-1. and one. Of course, their record still after their 24-point win over Mississippi State a couple weeks ago. They're at a pretty strong spot right now in striking distance, I would say, for these two programs. Do you think TCU, if they – close out the big 12 here especially with Oklahoma State falling and and some changes going on there in that conference is there a chance TCU maybe is a surprise team into the college football playoffs I think it's a very possible outcome and that's weird to say because um, you know after Gary Patterson left this program I was wondering you know what is what is going to be the culture what's it going to look like and generally with with a program that doesn't have you know as much notoriety as say in Alabama or a Georgia um, it's tougher to rebuild those. Like you look at LSU, that was a, a decent turnaround already. Um, but a, a program like TCU would take a couple years to build. I think they could win the Big 12 championship and all of a sudden, you know, they're right in that conversation for college football playoff, which would be the surprise team, just like Cincinnati was last year. TCU is absolutely came out of nowhere and are now real contenders to get into the CFP. Right before we move here into the top five, I want to urge you guys hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying all the college sports coverage here. We also cover the AP Top 25 for college basketball. We're going to talk a lot of college basketball, a lot of college football the rest of the season here for both uh, basketball and football. So we're really excited about that. And now into the top five. Let's get in there. We're looking at the same five teams we've been looking at the last couple of weeks. Clemson, still 8-0. Their last game was still that comeback win against Syracuse. Of course, no game this past weekend. And then Michigan kind of re-solidifies themselves uh, in that state. They go out and beat Michigan State handedly. Of course, both of these teams are 8-0. We've been asking the question all year long, which one of these teams deserves to be four? Which one deserves to be five? Perhaps we'll get the answer by the conference championship time. Maybe Michigan drops a game in the Big Ten. Look at a team like Ohio State if they have to face them. Maybe Clemson falls apart in an ACC matchup. Though, is that really what's going to determine four or five here for you, Austin, you think? Yeah, and I think Michigan's got the, the tougher pathway here. Um, I don't know. I, Michigan, I think, is the better football team from the product that we've seen in their convincing wins. Clemson, it's been a little bit closer. The, they've had some issues at the quarterback position. Um, you know, definitely think that they're not officially, officially back, but, you know, maybe I'm going to get clowned for saying that, but I, I think Clemson's a very good team. I just think Michigan is a little bit more well-rounded right now. I like what they have on the ground game. Um, but once again, they got Ohio state standing in their way. Right. Very interesting to note there, the total number of votes, about 66 more votes for Michigan than Clemson. It's about a similar gap from where Alabama and Clemson are. And remember Clemson and Michigan have the same record. So voters really aren't as sold on Clemson like they are on Michigan, like you're saying, Austin, but that Big Ten is a little bit of a battle hound right now. And we get into that top three here. Again, this is really where we've been talking about, is this deserved, is it not? We don't really see a lot of movement this week. Tennessee obliterated Kentucky, of course, forced them out of the top 25. They're tied here at number two, which is crazy. 1,500 apiece. And the interesting thing here, Tennessee has 18 first-place votes, whereas the Buckeyes only have 15. Of course, Ohio State, too. they're no slouches, though. They beat Penn State this week by 13. They had two. But both of these programs played great this weekend. You know, at Penn State, that's a tough place to go in and play. Ohio State took care of business. And Tennessee just walloped Kentucky at home, Austin. I need to know here which team actually deserves to be number two. Uh, and which team are you more scared of at this point to play against? Oh, man. I, I that, That's not a fair question, I don't think, after watching <laughs> watching Tennessee just lock up Kentucky. That was a... That was a phenomenal game. And let's talk about Jalen Hyatt's ascension here for Tennessee. He's been great. Red zone machine guy that continues to find the weak spots in the defenses, especially when it comes to being in that red zone. Uh, The guy just has a knack for the end zone. 
I, I look at this and, and I say, wow, I'm, I'm shocked here. You, you got two twos. It's crazy. The, the points being exactly even. Um, it doesn't get much closer than that. Um, but for me, what team scares me a little bit more, I think Ohio State, I, I like their playmakers that they have a little bit more than Tennessee. Uh, you know, Josh Heupel's done a great job with the program there uh, at Tennessee and, and Hendon Hooker, who is 24, soon to be 25, if I'm not mistaken, older prospect. Um, he's, he's definitely found his footing here with the volunteers, the former Virginia Tech product is putting on an absolute show, but I think Ohio state's a little bit more talented and I expect them to be here more. However, once again, um, it, it's tougher for these big 10 East schools, I think um, at this point with how the schedule could play out. Um, but right. looking at it here, crazy stuff. And then of course, Georgia, number one, get, pick up a big win against Florida. Um, once again, this offense is rolling. Uh, th there's a lot of different things that they throw at you defensively. That definitely was, you know, confusing Anthony Richardson for Florida. So I, I, this is insane though. This is crazy. Right. All the top three schools here, or should we say all the top two schools here, all three of them have been so good this year. You already shout out Jalen Hyde. I also want to shout out JT Tuamalu. Uh, he had a crazy defensive game for Ohio state, two interceptions, two sacks, a forced fumble and a touchdown. It doesn't get much better than that. That's one of the legendary defensive performances from a single player. Uh, and it was pivotal for them, right? They won by 13 points without him. Maybe they don't get the job done. Uh, but of course he came up big and so did Ohio state in that win. Hopefully you guys did enjoy today's video. If you did make sure to leave a like subscribe to the channel for more, make sure to check out some of the other videos on our channel as well. Thanks guys so much for watching and we'll catch you in the very next utility sports video.